Good evening, everyone. My name is Pamela Wu, your city manager. We're going to get, go ahead and get today's、um, budget town hall started at 6 30. Today is May 18, 2023.、Um, before we get started, I want to thank everyone who's making your time, especially council members and staff and members of public, for、um, taking your time from your busy schedule to be with us. This means a lot. So, this is the meeting for the community budget town hall where we will review the city manager's proposed budget, specifically including strategies how staff has come up to minimize the financial impact、um, due to the city TFA re、uh, budget reduction. And also, the main purpose and the intent for today's meeting is to receive comments and feedback from members of the public.、Um, just kind of a heads up. So, we were able to bring the budget to council for a study session last night and receive quite a bit of a direction and feedback and, in the hope that we will be able to bring the budget back to council for final adoption on June 6. So,、um, let's see.、Um, And then, for those of you who are online and also in presence, I want to take a moment to thank you if you already completed a community survey,、uh, provided your input. But again, tonight is the opportunity for you to voice your concern and give us additional opinions or feedback so that we can incorporate those into the final budget. Um, so, what we have、uh, provided for you tonight is a brief presentation of the city manager's proposed budget that will be outlined by the budget team to my left. And then we'll alloc allocate about an hour or so of time for a question and answer and also to receive comments.、Um, at this time, since we have a hybrid meeting that includes live audience and also Zoom participants, if I can see a show of hands of people that would like to comment so we can calculate、um, the number of speakers. <laughs> Kirsten, can you see a show of hands on Zoom? Anyone wishing to comment, make sure you have, use the raise hand feature.、Uh, so far, I see four. Okay. If、right. you're on calling in by phone, use the star nine to raise your hand. So, seeing that we have a number of speakers,、um, I don't want to make it too formal. So, if we could maybe set around three minutes for each of the speakers, we will not have a time、uh, for you to have the clock、uh, counting down, but we will have a reminder for you, either visually or physically, that your time's up so that we can allow others to participate and、um, give their opinions as well. So, we will have microphones going around in the live audience so that you will have an opportunity. To share your comments, and、uh, the clerk's office will be able to unmute you for those who are on Zoom. And the order of the participation will go from the live audience first, then to Zoom. Um, lastly, um, before we go ahead and get started, I just want to put a reminder to everyone that I understand that this is a difficult and challenging time for、um, us all, council、uh, staff, and community to talk about a budget reduction. Nobody wants to do this.、Um, but I, again, welcome your openness and just want to remind everyone that we may. Disagree and agree.、Um, if we keep in mind the courtesy and respect for each other, this is a place, and I want to make sure that this is a safe place for everyone to be able to express your opinions. Without further ado, I'm going to turn the presentation to the budget team. Thank you, Director Alfaro. Thank you, City Manager Wu. All right, make sure I get this lined up here. So, okay, presentation is behind me.、Um, first, we're going to start.、Uh, By、uh, going over the agenda, we're going to be talking about why the city's in a deficit. I also want to point out we did about a one hour presentation last night. So if you're looking to get in depth into what's happening in the budget, I invite you to watch、uh, that meeting last night. This will be a much more high level overview to leave sufficient time for questions.、Um, we'll also, so we're going to go over why we're in a deficit. We're going to go over our plan to resolve that deficit. We're going to quickly go over community impacts. Again, all of these were presented last night as well. We're going to give you a little bit of additional. Information and then hop into question and answer.、Uh, so, with that, we go to our town hall objectives.、Um, so, our town hall objectives today,、uh, City Manager Wu touched on these already, but it's to receive、uh, comments and questions from the public, in addition to gather information and return with updates、uh, for the final budget hearing. So, that'd be any questions we're not able to get to this evening or can't fully、uh, answer. 
Uh, with that, we always like to start off with our reporting cycle on budget. And why this is important is this tells you the minimum number of times that we're going to be before the city council talking about the city's budget. This isn't a normal year. Um, I anticipate the next upcoming year as more information is known that's going to be impacting our forecast that we're going to be in front of council depending on that timing. If it doesn't work out for one of the quarterlies in front of the council more times than this, more than likely in this upcoming fiscal year. But like I said, this is at a minimum how often we're talking in front of council. The other important thing I want to point out is we did actually have one extra meeting so far this year. We met on uh, April 13th uh, and that was the quickest we could get on the agenda to inform the council and the community that we were making a shift going from a budget that was being grown and enhanced to a reduced budget. Uh, with that, let's hop right into how we've uh, gotten into the deficit situation. And so for any of you that may have joined us or uh, seen us out at our booths at the various different festivals in front of the library and the farmer's market, this graphic will look familiar to you. And so what's really happening with the city is we're experiencing a 73% reduction in sales tax revenue. And the reason that's happening is we anticipate an adverse impact from a sales tax audit um, from the state uh, California Department of Tax and Fee Administration or the CDTFA. And what this means is, as I mentioned earlier, we went from having a budget that was growing now to having to make reductions. So it's really going to be about a $30 million reduction from where we originally thought the budget was going to be in terms of revenue, which is about a 28% total loss. And that means we're in a structural deficit. So it's not only this next upcoming year, but it's for several years to come into the future that money is going to be going away. And that's what we're estimating. And that means now we're in a structural deficit. We're ongoing. Our expenditures are higher than our revenue. And so as we go through and we go into what we're doing in the current fiscal year, it's important to remember that a budget is an estimate and that we're going, this is the beginning of the conversation. And as I mentioned, we're going to be coming back with adjustments as we know more. Um, right now, when, you, when we talk about the budget, we still see we're not structurally balanced. We don't anticipate that to continue into the future. This is the beginning of the conversation. Our goal is to get us back into a balanced situation as soon as possible. So with that, if that wasn't enough information on the CDTFA or how we got into this situation, um, we do have a website available that we've been updating with frequently asked questions, a timeline of events, uh, and that can be found if you scan that QR code or if you visit that website. Uh, in addition, if you haven't already had the opportunity to take the community budget survey, it's three questions. It should go pretty quickly. You can also leave comments there for us as well. You can either scan that QR code or you can visit the link right underneath. Um, so we invite you that our survey is open until um, May 31st. So if you haven't already had a chance, uh, go look at that and we'll be providing the final results to council as part of the June 6th uh, budget uh, hearing and adoption. Uh, so with that, I will hand it over to uh, Budget Manager Leung to take you through um, an overview of the general fund. Thank you everyone for attending today. Today I'll be providing an update on the proposed budget. This table shows the changes in the budget, specifically highlighting the journey from the original proposed budget to the April 13th forecast and ultimately to the current proposed budget document published on May 5th. In this table, we show what we had initially planned for the proposed budget. Revenues were 111 million and expenditures were 104 million. However, after the CDTFA informed us of potential revenue impacts in mid-March, revenues were revised to 80 million. We faced a significant financial gap and had to make tough decisions. Approximately 24 million needed to be cut from the budget. In the next slide, we will illustrate how we addressed this financial challenge and balanced the budget. Our dedicated city staff worked diligently to analyze the budget and make reductions while minimizing the impact on the community. With careful decision making, we successfully navigated the challenging financial landscape while maintaining a fiscally responsible approach. We understand that these changes may have raised questions and concerns, but we encourage you to engage in open dialogue and share any inquiries or feedback that you may have. Transparency and collaboration are essential in fostering trust and ensuring that we can work together to achieve the best possible outcomes for our community. Let's now proceed to the next slide where we'll delve into the specific strategies and actions that help us close the financial gap. 
This pie chart illustrates how we successfully closed the $24 million deficit. As you can see, a significant portion of the deficit reduction, amounting to $6.2 million, was achieved through the elimination of 14 vacant positions, as well as a removal of 15 additional positions that were initially proposed. In addition, reductions in materials accounted for $1.8 million, and reductions to contracts accounted for $2.7 million. These measures were carefully evaluated to ensure minimal impact on the community while addressing the financial challenges. Furthermore, we made significant reductions to transfers out, amounting to $5.8 million, as well as the capital outlays, special projects, cost allocation, and contingencies, amounting to $1.4 million. And finally, the remaining balance of $6 million is recommended to be covered using our unassigned fund balance, which is currently $53 million. This prudent use of fund balance provides us with additional time to navigate the ongoing transition without making deeper cuts than may be necessary. It allows for a gradual and controlled approach to managing the financial challenges we face. And we will make adjustments and appear before City Council as we know more information. On the next few slides, we show the service level impacts of the budget reductions. At last night's City Council meeting, City Council restored some of the items on this list, and that's why they've been crossed out. And this presentation will also be available for the public on a city website starting tomorrow. Now I'll be discussing next steps. So on Tuesday this week, you heard our third quarter financial report. Last night, we had our proposed budget study session where we went, provided an overview of our proposed budget. And then today we have a community budget town hall to receive your feedback and questions. On June 6, we anticipate having a final budget hearing and adoption. And then finally, in November, that's when we'll see an update on our first quarter financial report to provide you an update on how we ended fiscal year 22-23, as well as an update on the first quarter of fiscal year 23-24. Let's now discuss how you can access the city's budget and the various tools available to ensure convenience and transparency for the public. First, if you're looking to access the budget document, the city website is your go-to source. For those seeking a more comprehensive overview or an in-depth analysis, we have the city's financial transparency portal, OpenGov. This is a powerful tool that not only presents the current year's budget, but also prior year budgets and actuals dating back to fiscal year 2008-2009. This allows you to examine the budget at the account level, providing you with detailed insights on how the city allocates its funds. Moreover, OpenGov allows you to customize the data, enabling you to create your own custom views and also, to make it more convenient, we also have predefined views that you can view. Now let's talk about our award-winning budget tools designed to further engage you in the budgeting process. First up is a resident tax calculator that allows you to estimate how your taxes contribute to city services. And then we have a budget forecast calculator that allows you to balance the city budget, enabling you to simulate various scenarios and explore potential outcomes, providing you an opportunity to better comprehend the complexities involved in budget decisions and helps you gain insights into the trade-offs and priorities. A goal is to provide an accessible and user-friendly resource that empowers you to actively participate in the city's budget. We value transparency and believe that an informed community contributes to better decision making. Thank you for your attention and please don't hesitate to explore these tools and resources and your engagement and participation are crucial in building a stronger and more accountable city budget. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Christina. Uh, so that will conclude the um, segment on the staff presentation. As I mentioned, that uh, we do want to hear from all of you, members of the uh, public, um, and as well as those who are participating on Zoom. And we also have Mayor Wei and also Vice Mayor Mohan, Council Member Fruin in attendance. Um, Mayor Wei, would you like to say something or? <laughs> <laughs> We also have another volunteer to do the job, but Mary, you're more than happy to do so. So, for um, so we will open the floor for those of you who are in a live audience. Thank you, thank you, Mayor Wei. She's a hands-on mayor. Um, hi, I'm Jennifer Griffin, and uh, I commend the staff and everyone for three days of intensive budget. I did the best I could to come all of them. 
Um, I just wanted to start out with, um, I guess after having gone through COVID, nothing scares me anymore, okay? You have to remember that during COVID, the unemployment rate rose to probably close to 12 to 13%. In 2010, the unemployment rate was up to 10 to 12 percent. We have, you know, my parents, all of them survived COVID. We survived COVID. The city's still here. We're all crawling back into some sort of strange new normal. Some of us are going to work two days a week and working from home the other three. Um, therein, we have a new just like everything else, who could have predicted COVID? We have the issues with the Apple, et cetera. I will say again, nothing scares me. That's one of the good things about getting older. You've been through a lot of things. Um, but I don't, I will urge the city to remain, don't fly off the handle, okay? You have a lot of residents who have been through a lot of things I will say that a lot of the residents are more calm about things. Um, I, I don't, first of all, let's start out with all the rumors about selling, quote, the farm, Blackberry Farm, literally. I have a question about the legality of any selling any piece of property in this city that the city owns. The land belongs to the people. We are the ones whose money was spent to purchase it. So therefore, if anyone is anticipating doing anything with Blackberry Farm, McClellan Ranch, um, the new building that where the old attorneys were, we need to check to make sure the legality. I do not believe that a vote of the of three members of the city council is legal to sell Blackberry Farm. We need to check the legality because there's a lot of um, publicity going out to the public. People are getting panicked. You don't want that. Our unemployment rate is still around 4%. People have jobs. They're not starving. Nobody's on unemployment. The city is not faced with immediate danger. We can appeal. This, this, as I found out Wednesday, this audit is not finished till July. We can appeal. The city also, remember, you have 52 to 58,000 people. We can apply pressure, not to you, but we can contact our senators, our assembly people, and if need be, the governor. We're not, we're part, we, we go with you in this. This is one of the things of 23 years of being a resident of this city and five years in the county. You have people to help tell you what they want to do. But I would like a statement from the attorney or whoever does this about any sale of land in this city. I remember in 1995 how proud everyone was, even not just Cupertino, about the fact that Cupertino purchased the Blackberry Farm property. My mother-in-law, who was 88 just years a, old, used to time come down from San minutes. Francisco they and go yourself. to Blackberry Farm when she was a teenager. Let's don't sell the farm. Proceed cautiously, we'll get through this. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Yes. Hi, good evening. Council members, city staff, and uh, Cupertino residents. My name is Emily Poon. At last night's budget session, Bobertino was cut. I did not have a strong opinion myself one way or another last night when I listened. But afterwards, I have the following thoughts. The event cost a total of $10,000. 5,000 for the materials and 5,000 for the part-time staff hired to run the event. It was popular and teens came to claim their free boba and it was a great chance to hang out. The event was intended to do something to improve mental health of our children, yet it was not advertised as such since it was not the most inviting of titles. Even city staff admitted they failed to see the path to the goal of improving mental health. If I had to find good use of $10,000 to improve the mental health of Cupertino teens, 
I would spend it on hiring golf coaches to introduce the game and sport of golf right in our own backyard Blackberry Farm golf course. Why? I look at the parks and recreation schedule and do not find golf instruction there. I heard that there are admirable programs like First Tee, a nonprofit which provides inexpensive golf instruction to grade two through grade 12. Unfortunately, First Tee is strong in Palo Alto and San Jose, but not here in Cupertino. In fact, my guess is that the Blackberry Farm golf course may not even be known to a lot of residents, especially to those who live east of Buck Road. Once you connect the dots and realize the crucial role a golf course plays in fostering good mental health, discipline, fun, flexibility, need for consistency, you will realize that sending our hardworking, studious young people to our backyard golf course is the best course to take. There is a lot to learn that can transfer to other areas of life, and it helps build confidence and strategy skills. The city can take the lead, and besides using its own funds to promote this mentally uplifting activity, can also explore getting De Anza College to start golf instruction again. Old timers tell me they used to have such instruction. Their funding is from another source than the city. Once you find good use of $10,000, you look at the budget and cut non-essentials. To me, the top non-essential is fees paid to consultants. We can spend money on healthy activities for kids that are affordable. Do the fa fair thing and the right thing by our Cupertino teens. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Anyone else in the audience would like to um, have a question? Claudio? Hi, good evening, everybody. City Manager, everybody, Mayor Wang and City Council. My name is Claudio Bono. I'm a resident here in Cupertino. I am genuinely have been contacted by some of my fellow resident and talking about Blackberry Farm. I'm basically here saying to city council and our mayor, we know it and you, uh, your team, it's not easy to have a deficit and come out with anything. We trust you, but just wanted to remind you as well that it takes money to make money. I, as a businessman, I've never failed in any businesses whatsoever. I do know that Blackberry Farm can be completely successful. Um, as a resident and as a proud Cupertino resident, I am <laughs> providing my services if need be to make money for the city of Cupertino. But just wanted to remind you, all my fellow uh, residents that it's not an easy area where you guys at. We know that, but we also feel very confident that all our city council, as well as all your team and under your leadership, Pamela Wu, that everything is going to be done well. I just want to give you my support. And uh, some residents are here to be at your disposal should help be requested. Thank you. Thank you. Any other in the live audience? Hi, I'm Debbie Timmers, and I apologize, I'll have to use my notes. Um, I want to thank you for putting together such a good budget. Um, it's very easy to understand the way you have presented it, and I know it's not a lot of fun, but I appreciate you doing that, so thank you. Um, your process has been thoughtful and data-driven. Thank you, too, for the city, to the City Council. I really appreciated how well you've worked together these past couple of nights, so that means a lot to residents. Um, we are in this together, and we do support you, all of you. Um, lastly, I don't have any qualms about selling city property. I just wanted to let you know that there are other opinions out there. Um, I really don't want to lose Blackberry Farm, but you know there are other possibilities as well. And also remember, there are many residents of Cupertino that aren't here tonight that can't make these meetings. Young families just don't have the time. But I know I, my daughter completed the survey, I know. And so just remember, there are other people there than just us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Anyone else in the live audience before we go into Zoom? Hi, I'm Jean Bedord, and I did sit through the session last night, 
and I appreciate all the hard work that you've done. I want to echo some of the other comments that have been made here. Um, this is an opportunity to rethink some of the priorities within the city, and I want to pick up on the Blackberry Farm golf course. One of the issues we have in the city is we're an aging population. I don't know how many people are aware that according to the PDI political data, 46%, nearly half, of voters are over the age of 55. That's the demographic served by the, uh, by the senior center and also the golf course. It's very good for seniors and they love it. Only 23% of households have children, half the number of seniors. And yet I feel that most, much of the emphasis in the budget for parks and recreation is oriented toward youth and teen, which are a declining demographic in our city. I'm particularly concerned about the proposal to merge the 50 plus scene with Parks and Rec. It is a separate publication, and in particular, it has a calendar, which is absolutely essential to seniors being able to make it to different activities. Now, if I get, you know, seniors aren't gonna look for senior aid, legal aid, in a parks and recreation brochure like this. I mean, I'm assuming it would be downsized. But we need to think about the needs of the entire population in the city, and I think adjust our mix of services. So as you move forward, I urge you to not be penny wise and pound foolish. You know, you, you spent far too much time last night on an $8,000 item. That's a penny compared to the whole budget. Look at the overall emphasis in our budget and where we're going as a city. Let's think of where we're going to be in five to 10 years. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Kirsten, can you take the um, Zoom speakers? Yes. <clears throat> yes, City Manager Wu. So we have uh, five hands raised on Zoom. Just a reminder, if you'd like to provide comments, please use the raise hand feature. You'll have three minutes to speak. So I see Mahesh Pakala, Jennifer Sharon, Peggy Griffin, uh, and Long Zhao, and Yuko Shima. So I'll start with Mahesh, and I'll allow you to speak. Welcome, Mahesh. OK, thank you. And uh, thank you all for giving me the chance to speak. Thank you, Mayor Angwei, Vice Mayor Sheila Mohan, and Council Member Jeff Wynn. And first of all, I want to thank the City Manager, Pamela Wu, and the amazing budget team. And really appreciate their hard work and commitment to work on this complex budget with all the cuts and everything. And I've been hearing all the comments, and I definitely agree with what they say. But I have one complete, uh, small um, comment to make, specific to slide number 59 and 72. I represent the Cupertino Bhubanesha sister city. I'm part of the board member, and I saw that you guys have cut some budgets for the, the festival that we do. And we are a very young organization, and uh, this is our second event that we are planning to do. And as you know, uh, the park and recreation did not fund us, though we, we are from the city. They funded some outside orgs. So as you know, cities are investing, actually, in the US for festivals for some good reason, especially because we are coming out of the pandemic. As you all know, festivals promote the city's brand, they increase uh, people to come to the city, they foster the arts and community involvement. And of course, they do a secondary way, they increase the revenues for the local businesses and other things, right? So I think this festival that we do will provide a financial bump for the local businesses. I think you have to, a little bit, if you can just uh, have a, uh, I would look at it kindly, I would say, because as you all know, again, these events are so important to showcase our people, our heritage and our values. And top of that, it also strengthens the community bond when they come and meet in the open spaces and in the sun, right? So just that's all my request is if you can not cut those fees, really appreciate that. Again, thank you so much for the time that you gave me and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mahesh. So we still have uh, four hands raised. We have Jennifer Griffin, followed by Peggy Griffin, followed by Long Zhao, followed by Yuko Shima. Welcome, Jennifer. 
Hi, good evening. This is actually Jennifer Sheeran. <laughs> oh, I apologize. <laughs> that's, that's fine. <laughs> uh, so good evening, everybody. Um, I'm speaking only on behalf of myself tonight. I'm sorry that I missed the meeting yesterday as I was attending another commission meeting. So um, I'd like to make a recommendation regarding the community grant funding part of the proposed budget modification. Uh, this was a thoughtful two month process by the Parks and Rec Commission to determine which proposals best align with our city principles. So as the vice chair of the Parks and Rec Commission, I was one of the four commissioners that voted on these items. The list as shown in the staff report from yesterday's meeting on page 36, and I'm, I'm sure everyone's looking for it right now, uh, was not designed actually to be a simple list, which it isn't numbered right now, but it was actually intended to be in the rank order of those recommendations, meaning the one at the top is the, had the most um, best fit our criteria. And um, I, I want to make sure that, that that's known. So, for example, the Cupertino Symphonic Band was our top choice, and it had almost twice as much support as the lowest ranked grant requester on the list. So I recommend that instead of funding all the requesters and, and just taking a budget reduction off, 25% off each of them, that we fund the th we don't fund the three lowest ranked funding requests. The top three ranked organizations had carefully determined how much they needed, and they submitted a thorough and thoughtful application and were most supported by all the commissioners in the tent. On one other note after, after that, um, I trust the staff and our council to do the best they can for our city. I, I really appreciate that you're having this forum this evening and, and what a great job the staff has done putting together this budget proposal. I think um, as someone, I think it was Debbie Timmers mentioned, it's very understandable and, and, and very clear. So I know that we can work through this challenge. Uh, thank you to council and staff for your hard work in doing so. Thanks. Thank you, Jennifer. Next we have Peggy Griffin, followed by Long Zhao, followed by Yuko Shima. Welcome, Peggy. Good evening, uh, staff and, and everyone. Um, I want to thank uh, for the presentations I watched last I attended and watched last night and I'm watching now. I have a couple of things. I want to thank Parks and Rec staff for keeping the 4th of July but producing it. I think the the approach of trying to preserve but reduce is a great one. Um, the presentation on the website, thank you Thomas, that would be great. Also, I agree with Claudio Bono on uh, regarding the golf course. You do need to spend a little money to make money, but I think there are a lot of things at the golf course that can be done as far as increasing fees um, that would help a lot. Um, also, the, the Parks and Rec membership for classes, the non-residents are paying a lot less than I think they should. Um, a lot of my friends that live out of Cupertino say they come to Cupertino because it's cheaper than going to, and staying in their own city. Um, also, um, the Cupertino scene, I think I, I agree with uh, Jean Bedore, the Cupertino scene, breaking it, putting it in with the catalog, uh, hides it but maybe just offer people a link. I don't need it on paper. If you sent me an email rather than, or let me opt in or, you know, at the events, let people opt in rather than receive paper. We received two Parks and Rec uh, catalogs uh, this spring. Also, um, the staffing. I don't understand I've heard numbers, 44 open recs, 22 from last year, 15 that you proposed additionally, that's 37, but then I hear 43, and you call them staff, but they're really open recs. And when companies face this situation, they have a hiring freeze, they remove all open recs, and in the case of uh, the company that my son works for, there is a promotion freeze. They're not even allowed to apply for promotions. So I'd like you to explain the numbers. How many people, how many job recs do we have open right now? 
And I know you're going to reduce by 14, but I've also heard that you have 15 additional, that's 29. So I'm all confused. How many job recs are you, do we have? How many are you going to reduce? And why, why can't you just eliminate the job recs and uh, do a hiring freeze? I know you need a few people, key positions that you are lacking but the number is tremendous from my point of view but so please explain that to me and um that's your time peggy thanks thank, thank you. you thank you next we have long Zhao followed by yukoshima welcome uh welcome long okay can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, this is Lang. I speak for myself. Uh, well, first of all, I would like to thank the uh, budget committee, uh, budget team, and so uh, we have a um, uh, thirty million revenue job, and you come up with uh, a twenty million reduction comparing to previous year. That's a great job. Uh, but uh, we still have a about a ten million dollar budget deficit need to come up with, and I uh, looked at uh, uh, our budget at a glance for last year. I had one chart that caught my eye, which is a ten year staffing and population growth chart. I noticed uh, last year our staff for one thousand residents was uh, 3.32, but uh, in fiscal year 15, 14 to 15, the number was 2.62, which is 0 0.7 staff, more staff for 1,000 residents. Uh, given we have uh, more than 66,000 residents in Cupertino, uh, the total number is 46 positions. And each position cost on average is uh, uh, $186,000 per year. So if we reduce our uh, staff per 1,000 residents number to, uh, previous work, to previous number, then we can save more than eight and a half million dollars. So that's almost the entire budget deficit. Yeah, um, like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, what, what's her name? Uh, so I also would like to say we should have a hiring freeze at least if we do not. Yeah, I, I know laying off is too hard, but uh, we should have a, a hiring freeze given the, the company I work on, we still have greater revenue, but just because the uh, the economy uncertainty, we have a high freeze for more than one year right now. And uh, um, yeah, uh, so only for some special positions, and uh, I think I should uh, ask for um, council approval say, uh, we should have this policy. As long as we have a budget deficit, we should have a time freeze for next year. Yeah, that's my point. Thank you. Thank you, Long. And our final speaker will be Yukoshima. Welcome, Yuko. Yuko, I can see you're unmuted, so you should be able to speak. And you just muted yourself again, so I'll ask you to unmute. So it looks like we may be having some technical issues with Yuko. Um, 
Uh, City Manager Wu, that is our, I, d I see no further hands raised. Okay. Uh, we're ha we are having technical issues with this last speaker. She's unable to speak. Not a problem. Thank you, Kirsten. And we can always come back. We have uh, quite a bit of a time. Um, so before we get into some of the answers, I want to thank everyone for your thoughtful ideas and, 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 and your um, enthusiastic participations. We're staff, we have to be here, but not you. So we really want to thank you for uh, being here again with us tonight, the third night in a row. Um, so I just want to uh, um, provide some general feedback to the questions. Um, there seems to be um, a question and also wanted a sound confident confirmation that whether or not city is proposing to sell any city uh, facility. Um, in the current budget that's proposed, uh, that was debuted to council last night, there is no proposal to sell any city facility, including Blackberry Farm. Um, this is going to be a 10-year exercise. Um, I can't promise if it, it gets really dire in the next 10 years whether or not that's going to be re-entered, reconsidered, um, but this is not part of the uh, current budget for fiscal year 23 to 24. Um, as it relates to Blackberry Farm, um, this topic will be brought back to council for uh, consideration for future use in the fall of this year. And I know that everyone has been waiting to see what the direction, and so are we staff, is anticipating a direction from council. So we're working on the strategy and also alternative that will be provided to council for direction later on this year. Um, there was some statement um, stated uh, regarding the community funding. Um, just to clarify, in the city manager's proposed budget, um, there was a proposal to reduce approximately $8,000 from the $32,000 total community funding. However, that has been restored by council last night, um, so there's no cut um, proposed in the final budget um, for the community funding. Um, there and along that line, there were some comments mentioned about um, subsidized fees for potentially the parks and rec classes and senior center services and whatnot. Um, just wanted everyone to know that we are um, bringing two different fee schedule study back to council for consideration. One will be sooner. We're looking at right around the summertime. This will be an annual CPI adjustment for our current fee, and subsequent to that, we've also retained a consultant to relook at the citywide fees. Are we at par with other cities? Is this time to readjust this, um, these fees or are there additional fees that could capture um, revenue to help offset the city operation? And we anticipate to bring that fee schedule back to the council for consideration later on this year, if not um, early part of next year. And that will really uh, give us a true picture of where we sit with the budget. Um, lastly, just wanted to kind of mention that there was some comments on staffing vacancies. How many people do we have? How many are we cutting? What is the plan? Um, to say that this is a complicated answer is, is to say the least. In the current budget, we're proposing to cut 14 unfilled vacant positions, and that's year one. As we explained to council last night, uh, we do propose to reduce the overall staffing um, team by attrition. So that means every year we'll relook at our organizational operation to see if there's opportunity to remove one or two or up to four or five, depending on the needs of the operation of the year. We don't really have a, um, a, a snapshot of how many vacancies we have. I'm looking at my director, Alfaro, because personnel issues come and go every day. I mean, um, if we had the best information yesterday, it might have changed tomorrow. With that said, we will provide additional uh, information to council uh, in the June 6 um, staff report to capture a summary, a very overview uh, summary of where we are, how many vacancies, how many recruitments we're going, and keep in mind some of the vacancies are being backfilled to keep the operation going. Um, and one of the speaker mentioned that uh, we gave a estimated about $186,000 per position last night. And with every reduction of a staff position, there will be, there will be impact to the city's uh, uh, services that is being provided. So yes, we will be saving money. However, there will be um, impacts to the city operation. 
Um, so I think I've summarized most of the um, the questions and comments. I'm sure that I don't cover, I didn't cover everything. So I'm gonna open the floors back up again to see if anybody else has any other questions or comments. Um, be more than happy to um, take them. Or Kirsten, if you wanna try Yuko again. Yes, I'll see if she's having audio issues still. So Yuko, I will, I've just asked you to unmute. It looks like she's still having audio issues. Okay, thank you, Kirsten. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. Hello, uh, my name is George Prokop. I live here in Cupertino for 27 years. And I am not involved into budgeting or things like that. But I would like to ask that somebody explain to me simple way, how is it possible that in city like Cupertino, taxes, or I, I heard sales tax, can go 73% down. I have really hard, uh, I mean, to wrap my head around that. This is, you know, we building every square inch of land more people are coming here. I don't think that, that that many people are living in Cupertino. So where is that loss coming from? How is it possible? Sure, sure. So I'm gonna do it in a very generic and non-finance way, and I'm gonna turn over to the finance expert in the room. So there are many different ways this a government can collect taxes, property taxes, your um, retail taxes, every time you go to the grocery store that you pay a portion of that. Um, your property tax for your real estate, a, a small portion goes to the city. Um, there has... So as I was saying, there are many ways to collect taxes for a local government. Part of it, more recently, um, is a retail sales tax coming from the online activities. Every time you order something online, a portion of the sales tax goes into a jurisdiction or potentially um, a county collectively. So um, we were informed by the state agency, CDTFA, California Department of Fees and Administration, um, that there is an unusual activity with one of the taxpayer in town, uh, with a lot of revenue generated during COVID when we we're shelter in place. When you were stuck at home, you really couldn't go anywhere but to order stuff online. Um, so because of the audit, we're anticipating that sales tax that we have been getting will be reallocated to other jurisdictions. This is not a final determination. So um, as we have uh, mentioned to city council, we're providing the worst case scenario, scenario should that happen. So this is kind of really why it's happening and how come it's affecting Cupertino. Um, so as I mentioned, I'm explaining to you so much in a non-finance person a dollar way. I'm gonna let the um, finance team elaborate in a more financial way. <laughs> I won't throw numbers at you, but talk more about the process. The CDTFA is responsible for the collection and also distributing sales taxes. On top of that, they look at how those taxes were distributed. So there's many different rules around whether you buy your something in a store, whether you buy it online and get it shipped to you, whether you buy it online and you pick it up in a store. And so when the state agency conducts an audit of a taxpayer, they look and see all the different ways this taxpayer has brought taxes in and how they've uh, distributed them to any particular agency. So uh, uh, the other cities in the area or whether they said it should go to the county pool. So what CDTFA has preliminarily told us is that this taxpayer was allocating this money to the city of Cupertino and we don't think that that is correct. We think the money should go somewhere else. So the reason we're having this huge drop is the CDTFA conducted this audit They've determined that the money should not have gone to Cupertino and should have gone to another agency. And that's, that's the gist of what's happening. Thank you. Okay. 
So if I don't see any more comments or feedback, I'm gonna invite the council members and mayor and vice mayor if you have any thoughts to share or um, any feedback that you would like to share with the members of the public. Hi, uh, since uh, the mayor refuses to go first, <laughs> uh, uh, it's on me. Uh, but just to uh, reiterate what everyone has said, this has been an extremely uh, difficult budget process and uh, commend the staff, uh, City Manager Pamela Wu, uh, Director Alfaro, Thomas and Matt, uh, and all the other depart uh, department heads for uh, pulling this together. Uh, I hope everyone feels somewhat comforted that uh, no uh, Cupertino properties are being sold this year. Uh, and so that, uh, you know, it, as uh, Pamela said, it could be an issue in, in future years, but definitely not for this year. Um, I think you mentioned the BOBA um, program. That's, that's been uh, restored. So there are no, the, the, okay, the, the program has been restored. Uh, the services will be produced uh, and the services will be continued, but uh, in a slightly different uh, fashion. So there will not be a service reduction um, because of some creative uh, uh, solutions that the staff has come up with. So, so Bobatino uh, will no longer be um, held going forward. However, the intent of having Bobatino was to promote mental healthness uh, for teens, and that will be continued uh, through other programs. Um, I would suggest that you write it down and submit it to the council members. Yes, please. I just wanted to conclude by saying this is year one in uh, a, a series of uh, uh, years where uh, the budget will be a major focus for the city. Uh, our charge this year was to balance the budget given the information we have about the sales tax, and we don't have a uh, all the information that we really need. So it, it was a, a planning document for the next fiscal year. Things change. Uh, you know, when you make plans, things change all the time. So um, as of yesterday or today, this budget holds. Uh, and if things change during the course of the year, the team will be coming back to give us uh, frequent updates. We expect changes to happen, but hopefully uh, not in, in the fiscal year that we are talking about. In future years, depending on how the state resolves the sales tax issue, we'll come back and see uh, what needs to be done. But for the w next one year, I think we are in reasonably good shape. Thank you, Vice Mayor Mohan. So I'll echo everything that the Vice Mayor just said. I want to thank everybody who's here. I also want to acknowledge we have about 40 people who joined us online today. So despite the fact that I think we had maybe six who asked questions or commented. There's a lot of other people who are interested, are paying attention. We have some great tools online. Thank you for maintaining them. And I'd encourage everybody to dig into it, see what you find interesting, and definitely email us. We're very open to hearing all of your suggestions. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Fruent. So um, I really want to say I'm so happy that everyone is here. You know, we are not pes pessimists. We are really and we're not optimists because optimists only wish the wind would change. But we are all leaders, our residents, our staff, and council members. We adjust ourselves when things come our way. And I am very, very confident that Cupertino, with our residents, with our staff, and with our council members, we will weather this through and come out better. I consider every challenge an opportunity to relook things, to really look at what our city's operations are. What properties do we own? What other future revenues we could have? Well, yes, where we can cut, but cut in a better way. For example, Bobatino might be gone, but there will be other activities for teens to take care of their mental health issues without saying it's mental health. It's very important for us to take care of that. Our staff is very, very ingenious. They, they can really come up with things. So, 
we lose something, but we will gain something else. So I am very positive that we will come out better, even if though we have to cut, cut sort of like $20 million right now, but we have future revenues that we can look at. I really think this is an opportunity for us to look at everything together. So I am really pleased that everyone's coming up with their ad ideals, and I want to emphasize again, no ideals is a bad ideal. Everybody needs to keep an open mind, and everything that's come will come to council will always go to the public. So I am really, I receive so many emails that you cannot sell BlackBerry Fund, you can't sell BlackBerry Fund. I'm telling you, we're not selling BlackBerry Fund. <laughs> so I want everybody to keep that in mind. The council will not do anything without your input. So I thank our staff, of course, and all the directors, and I thank our residents, and I thank my fellow council members that we are going to do this together, and together we're really, really strong. So thank you for the input. Thank you for all the uh, creative ideas. We need that innovation. We need that creativity. We also want to take this chance to work with everybody. I especially want to tell Jennifer the two ideas you presented yesterday about, you know, multi, give our staff multi, you know, service uh, and train them to do multi jobs. Yes, that's a great, 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 you know, uh, suggestion. So we need that. So I am very confident that we are going to do this well and will come up better. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor Wei. Um, so before we conclude tonight, I noticed that we do have one more speaker on Zoom. So Kirsten, would you go ahead? Certainly, we have Rhoda Fry and uh, welcome Rhoda. Uh, good evening. Thank you for letting me jump on. I was watching on the TV and then I thought, oh, I should run down to the computer. So anyway, um, I, I have a favor to ask and I also have a question. And so the favor to ask is um, the next time we do see the budget, um, I'd really like to see the budget in comparison to actuals of, of, of one to two years. Because when I compared this budget to the 2021 budget, bottom line, we're not really cutting anything. And, um, and so I think it would be more realistic to be looking at previous actuals than to look and compare to a previous version of this budget or where we are at with the 22. Uh, what was budgeted for 2022. So that's the favor to ask. Now the question. We've been hearing about this 73% reduction in um, the sales tax, but then when I delved into the budget, it was that it was at 63%. Um, so can you explain the discrepancy in that number? And that's it. And thank you for much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rhoda. So again, I'm going to try to answer in a very non-finance way, non-financial way. Um, so the 70% was at a time when we had the information available back in April. That was our best estimate. Um, as Mayor and Vice Mayor and Council Member Fruin and, and I share with everyone, we're getting more information as we have. So uh, getting closer to the printing of a document and also more closely to the presentation date, um, the number has shifted. Director Faro. The, just a, a slight um, different way to look at, at that. Um, previously, we've always compared adopted budget, prior year adopted budget to the current year's proposed budget. Uh, but however, we, as we mentioned in the presentation in the, last night, was that we were actually ready to go with the, we were in the process of producing this document with completely different numbers. Um, when we got the news from the CDTFA that of their preliminary uh, decision, and we had to shift. So when we were at the meeting on the 13th, we had a sense of what we wanted to reduce, but it was still working off of what we thought was gonna be our sales tax number for the current fiscal year. So that original budget number is what we compare to and how we get to the larger reduction number. Uh, in terms of the other question, the budget does include for each program area and department two years worth of actuals, last year's adopted budget and the current year's proposed budget. It does it by each program area. However, I do want to caution against comparing budget to actuals when you're trying to see what the budget is going to be because when you budget, we budget for everything we think is going to happen. 
and fiscal year, if fiscal year 19, 20, 21, and 22 taught us anything, was that things can change quickly, and whatever you thought was going to happen is no longer happening, and as a fact, this is the, another perfect example. Um, and so when we try to budget, we make our best guess for what we think we're going to spend and the dollars we think we're going to bring in, and we adjust. And that's why we generally try to look at budget to budget. We do look at budget to actuals in the year that it's actually happening. So we can tell you how we're doing against our estimates. Are we in line? Are we behind? Are we ahead? And then what are those reasons for why? And that's really just kind of an overview of, of why we do the comparisons that we do uh, in the budget book. Hey, can I ask a question? <laughs> <laughs> sure, go ahead, Mayor Wait. Um, so my question to you, um, Director Alfaro is, so in the actual, right now the budget is a planning document. So in the actual happening in the year, like first quarter report, second quarter report, third, is that when you're gonna do the actual against the budgeting? Uh, that's correct. So our, we just took third quarter report to council on, to, on Tuesday night. So if you look at that document for every fund, we do a comparison of where we are against the budget and we do a trend analysis on that financial report as well to say not only in this year but in the last couple years, where have we been at this time of the year? Are we ahead? Are we behind? Why do we see that happening? We also compare to um, where we were last year at the same time as well as, for, as a reference. So you'll see those in any of our quarterly reports when we do those budget to actual comparisons. And one more question, actually, just for the residents' sake. I, I do believe our city, or maybe a lot of cities, have a very conservative way of budgeting. Um, on your budget right now, you try to maximize, you think we can spend this much, and then our revenue is this much, but you're conservatively so that um, it always come ahead most of the times. Is that how the strategies um, you're doing? Correct. If we're going to be wrong, we want to be wrong to the good, not to the bad. Um, so hi historically, what we do is we want to make sure when we're looking at department budgets that we're saying, you know, based historically on what you spent, even if you didn't spend it last year, if the last two or three years you know you've spent a higher amount, you need to go with what we've historically spent and we need to understand if the prior year or the current year is an anomaly or not, right? So we go through a very in-depth process. The departments go through them, budget team reviews them to understand why is it this the number that the department needs and what is it that, that number will fund so that we can understand as we're doing this analysis, if we, we'll know if we're over why and if we know if we're running behind, we'll have a good understanding of why that's happening as well. So for example, I want to ask you an example. For example, for the mayor's fund, I haven't spent any yet. But that doesn't mean next year we don't give the next mayor any fund because he or she might have a need to do it. So even if you have a historical, like this year we didn't spend it, but you look at the historical spending, so you're still going to budget some. Is that how um, that, the strategies you're using? That is an excellent example. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mayor Wei. Um, so we've come to a full hour from the starting time. I hate to keep you all this in an air-conditioned room where there's a beautiful weather out there for us to enjoy. So if you're okay, we're going to call the end of the meeting, and thank you all for coming, and enjoy the rest of your evening.